To get into the names of God is extremely uh, intricate uh, <laughs> from what I've found. I mean, I've spent hours and hours since uh, that Adonai thing uh, just, just seeking to know the heart of the Lord there. And um, <clears throat> there are, um, sadly, I had had some notes here that <clears throat> I guess I lost off my iPad. But I want to I want to talk about it a little bit, and I um, and I am open to correction on this because we're dealing still dealing with uh, Elohim and Adonai, and I wonder if anybody any of you guys have a um, a Strong's uh, Concordance app, maybe on an iPad or something, you could look up something quickly. Anybody have anything like that? Unmute and let me know. Yes. Okay. All right. Because I may, uh, let's see, who, who all said yes? Scott? Who else? Mallory. I couldn't tell the other name. Mallory and, Mallory and someone else? Anyway, the app. Uh, so maybe I'll just use Scott and Mallory, you guys, to help me out if I need to look up specifically the words. The part that I lost was all of the <laughs> all of the chapters that I had all of the different names for it there, <clears throat> and I didn't really realize that it wasn't there until about 20, 15 minutes ago. So, so <clears throat> I may need your help. Um, uh, so, <clears throat> I, uh, we know that um, that Elohim represents the three in one, particularly, and we know that it's it's true um, from um, from the three in one showing up and Abraham recognizing them. But in that recognition, he addressed them as Adonai. <clears throat> And I want to uh, uh, throw out a possible reason why they did that. <clears throat> and I've searched the scriptures and there was, I mean, I'm, I'm sad I lost those notes because there was a particular, a specific application of that. And all I have is my general application at this point um, in relationship to its use. So to begin with, I think we need to um, take a look at Elohim, the three, and I think we need to understand not a biblical truth about them or a biblical truth in Genesis 18. I think we need to recognize something of the nature of God that is true of our God, uh, and in that sense, my Elohim, if you will. Um, and we went through a lot of scriptures last time, going through my Elohim. <clears throat> you know, O Jehovah, but my Elohim. And, um, and to try to grasp <clears throat> an interrelationship that works within the Godhead, within the Trinity. And a, another part that maybe we've never really recognized uh, that I have kind of put within the name of, of Adonai. And so, uh, let me just begin with Elohim. The biggest thing about the Trinity is they give and bless one another. Now we, those of us who are from New Creation Fellowship particularly, we know that. We, we, We've studied that, we've seen that, and I think last week or the week before I drew the three circles, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, <clears throat> and in other studies that I've done, we have gone, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, I'm still fighting this uh, uh, respiratory thing that's got me, um, and, and we uh, and we went through, in other studies, we went through the scriptures showing how Jesus honors the Father and the Holy Spirit honors Jesus. And, you know, that whole flow between them. And 
So we, we somewhat understand that, so I'm not going to go into a big explanation of that. But I just want to um, make a few short explanations as a lead-in to present some of what I believe relates to Adonai. Okay, so I wrote, the biggest thing about the Trinity is they give and bless one another. And, and I want to emphasize that for them, it is a giving. It's not just um, uh, Christian, they're good Christians. Uh, it's not just uh, doing, uh, you know, being nice. There is in their heart a giving to one another. All right. Now, I will say this. We know that through, the, through a process um, that at different times, one particular person of the Trinity is sort of in the forefront. And if you, was, if you will, in the forefront, even meaning that they are, um, they are in a form of weakness or under the other two, if you will, in that sense. And um, we kind of get that <clears throat> with Jesus, who is continually, particularly in the Gospel of John, but continually give, you know, giving all glory to the Father. Okay. The Father and the Spirit at that time representing Elohim, and Jesus representing the way that he's relating to them is, as, and I'll just use it now, as referring to them as Adonai, Lord, okay? Um, <clears throat> and uh, so in that giving and in that lowliness that Jesus, or the Holy Spirit, I mean, the Holy Spirit is definitely in that place where, you know, he has, you know, he, he's down here. He's down here still. He's been down here for all this time. And he's serving and ministering and loving and pouring out and giving and all of that. <clears throat> and uh, he's doing that to the glory of the Father and to the glory of the Son and to the glory of the Father-Son relationship. And he is, he, is, he is invisible and he has disappeared as an entity to be honored and, and you know, all that stuff in a, in a certain way as he makes his one ministry them, Elohim, and him a servant to that. And so what I am suggesting is, is that he would address them at times in that weakened or lowly position as my Elohim as my protectors, well, the one that gives and the ones that bless. So they know the, the two that are blessing out of Elohim to the third person of the Trinity, um, they know that in their blessing, for example, blessing the Holy Spirit, well, he's going to bless back. Blessing Jesus, he's going to bless back. Um, that that is, and he's going to bless back because he's in a weakened state or a more lowly state than the other two. He's going to bless back with respect and honor because he is at that time more lowly. So, um, so they know the other one will bless back. It won't, in other words, even though one is, uh, as it were, um, if, you could, if, if you could draw the Trinity like I did, like this is the Father, and this is the Son, and this is the Holy Spirit, that one of them is out from, they didn't leave the Trinity, Because this is Elohim, this is the Trinity, but Jesus goes to earth, or he comes back, and the Holy Spirit is down here ministering. And so that would mean that they are, you know, the Holy Spirit is still part of the Trinity, but he is in 
a more lowly position and called to it. Jesus said, I must go away that the Holy Spirit come. Okay, well, and he says, uh, I and my Father are one, but my Father is greater than me. They're, they take, from time to time, they take a lowly position to support the other. And um, when they do that, um, they will receive blessing and covering and giving from the Trinity that is not in weakness, but they also will not just be the recipient that gains at that time. They still are in nature Elohim, but they will treat the rest of Elohim as Adonai. Still Elohim because he's still part of that, but he's in a more lowly position than the other two. And so, um, even though he's in that, or Jesus is down here and he's being crucified, he, there's still that giving back. Um, uh, uh, Jesus dying on the cross and, and saying, you know, my Father's with me, you know. And uh, having that spirit, my Father is with me. You know, in other words, he's, he's honoring the Father and uh, instead of looking only at his wretched position that needs help, you know, okay, I need your help. Well, the way to get your help, well, the way to get his help is not to um, step out of the, the uh, Trinity and no longer function as, as, as a giving entity within that. In other words, not do what Satan did. Now, he wasn't part of the Trinity, but when he stepped out of that flow in spirit, or if you and I do, um, well, in his case, then he became cut off from it because it was, I will be, I this, I that, I the, all this. It all becomes about me or you or Satan. Um, and so we have done disrespect to Elohim if we in our weakened state are not still of one spirit and one heart, you know. Um, so, uh, when, when, uh, when, so it talk, let's just talk about Jesus going into death, okay. When the one um, going into death or weakness, when, when one goes into death or weakness, they treat the other still with high respect as if they're a servant. Well, they are. Jesus, you know, uh, read, how about read Isaiah and listen to his version of God. Um, the, the, the suffering servant, okay? And, um, but in that suffering, you know, uh, there's still this um, heart of, uh, and let's put the Holy Spirit back up here. So the sun is down here. There's still this heart that says, oh, the Lord teach us to pray. And he goes, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom, your kingdom come. Your, your will be done in earth as it is. In earth. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us. In other words, we're more in a weakened state. We need daily bread. Whereas the other two members of the Trinity don't. Uh, he needs daily bread. Uh, forgive us our trespasses. If we're in that situation, we, we have trespassed. We have messed up because um, we're in that weakened state. Um, though, uh, forgive us our trespasses that, uh, and those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For thine, O Father, O Elohim, thine is the kingdom. 
and the power and the glory at O Adonai. Using that name as a respectful term used by someone of this spirit that is brought down uh, and, and I am sorry about losing those notes, but there was a specific thing I kept seeing, particularly in the Psalms, when it used Adonai, that it, was a, it wasn't just you being in trouble, because um, there are many uses of uh, Jehovah on that front, but there were some specific things that seemed like the others, but they weren't. And I'm sorry, but I had to rush over here and like within... I didn't get a chance to look at anything, but oh no, where are my notes? <clears throat> um, so, um, so when one of them are, is in death or in weakness, they're going. Uh, uh, they treat the other two with respect and humility. With respect and humility, my. Adonai would preface that uh, as the rest, of, that would be Jesus down here on the earth, let's just put it like that, Jesus down here on the earth, he's still part of the Trinity, uh, but he is in that lowly state, so he would address them as my Lord, my Adonai, because right now, He's, he's needing them to be there for him just as he would be there for the Holy Spirit of the Father if it, they were in that situation. All right. So, again, I, I still haven't had a chance to search out the whole thing. Uh, I, I will read some scriptures that go along that line. Um, but but I, wanna, I, want, I want to try to get this theme in you. And then... Um, then I put one name used to show that spirit that for the weaker one is the name Adonai. Uh, and, it's, and it's addressing Elohim as Adonai. Okay, well, that's weird. I mean, think about it. Because all three of these, that's God. If the sun is up here, they're all three together, Elohim. So why, you know, in one sense... You wouldn't say Elohim if you were the Son in that sense, because that would be speaking of yourself. You would say, my Adonai, or, well, as in Genesis 18, 1, my Adonai. Um, meaning, um, I will not use my power to get out of this. I look to you. See, it's, it's as pure as pure as can be. Turn these stones into bread. I will not use my power as Elohim, the creator of all things, including bread and stones, to take care of myself. I will not do that. Not because I'm low, lower or worse or any of that stuff, but because I'm in that situation of weakness where I will address my Adonai as the one that I honor and respect as if I were the servant and they were God, whereas him, Jesus, yea, you know, what does it say in Philippians 2? Being in the form of God thought it not a thing to be grasped after, to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation. And you know the rest of it. And even, uh, even unto death. And so, um, so there, there in that state, he's still, God is still his Father. The Holy Spirit is still part of the Trinity. And, and, but he will honor that as if he were a servant. As if... Um, because of the place that he's in. And when, when it comes to someone else's turn to do that within the Trinity, uh, they will honor the other two in that way. 
because it's the way that they are, because it's God, it's Elohim. It is, it is the way um, to function within that. And if, we just, and if we just don't see Elohim as three in one, and we just see the term God in the New Testament as a, a God up there, we leave out a tremendous amount of humility and lowliness and respect. And I mean deep, deep respect. We don't have respect for, for that which is, as it were in this case, that which is above. Um, we only look at that as a, um, a means to our blessings instead of blessing back. Okay, so, um, so my wording here is, who is Adonai, Adonai is the protector of the other members of the Trinity or, tho or those who are manifesting that nature? That would mean David or you or me. Uh, the protector of that, but not, not protecting from the cross or protecting from, but to know that, Jesus, you don't have to put your hand to this. We're here. You're not alone. We'll move at the right time. And you're leaving that up to us because of the respect when you looked at us as Adonai, the Adonai of, the, of Elohim, and you being the, the servant to them. In Jesus' case, it was his mission. In the Holy Spirit's case, it, was, it still is his mission. All right, so um, it is the name used for the other two for the two that are not in weakness or whatever. Um, <clears throat> all right, so I want to, with that in mind, I want to go through, um, I want to go back to the first use of Adonai. Okay? First use of Adonai. I wonder where that is. Well, some of you already know, don't you? You little sneaky scripture searchers, you. Uh, the first use of Adonai is Genesis 15, first time, first time used. <clears throat> and, um, and he uses it several times. Okay? So, uh, in fact, he uses it a bunch. Um, and, um, and, and let me just start by saying, he doesn't understand at all the spirit of that Thing when you're in weakness or when you're, you know, put in that position of death or whatever, he doesn't, number one, he doesn't understand <clears throat> that God uses weakness and death. Um, and the other part is he doesn't understand respect. He doesn't understand respect for uh, Elohim behind that name. When he calls him Adonai, which would be the whichever two, um, Jesus would understand that I am their servant here. Abraham doesn't, and Abram at this point, he didn't understand that at all. He somehow picked up the name Adonai as Lord and um, <clears throat> thinks that you would look at these things the rest of the uh, or the Trinity, as you got to do start, you got to start doing stuff for me. This is this is his view of Adonai at this point. Now, will that change? Oh, baby. It will change. It'll change big time in chapter 18 where he uses it a bunch. But he won't get it in chapter 15. All right, so let's go through 15 some here. Um, let me just read, uh, gosh, uh, 1 through 8. Genesis 15, 1 through 7 or 8, I will see. 
After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, Adonai, Lord God, Adonai, Lord, the first one, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go child? What wilt thou give me? Folks, until you understand this relationship that is God, the last thing you start doing as a servant is asking, well, what are you going to give me, Lord? What are you going to give me, Adonai, protector of those who go into death willingly, who suffer with you willingly? And you're, you're, you're sitting there griping about what you haven't got. Um, Seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham's, uh, Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my own house is the heir. He's, he's not asking, or he's not even griping about it. He's saying he is, because God says he's not your heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Okay, well, I think I've, I've said, well, God is staunch about his seed, so he came back with that. But I think a little bit of that was also, look, buddy boy, don't, don't call us Adonai. Don't call out Elohim Adonai if you're not going to be in that weakness and trust us to bring you through this instead and let us give because that's what the Godhead does, and you're supposed to be functioning as one of us, chapter 18, and, um, uh, but, but you're nothing like us. So, this shall not be the heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of the Ur of Chaldees to give to thee this land to inherit it. Uh, and so this is so here's a here's another giving statement from Elohim. Okay, because they're always given to one another, and if they bring anybody into oneness. They treat him as if they understands that. And if you don't, you're, you're Abram. Okay, so here's another. Uh, the Lord says this, uh, And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit. I am the one. I brought you out. I give to give you this. Uh, I'm a giver. I'm the one who brought you out. You didn't do it. Next verse. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know I shall inherit it? How am I going to know I'm going to inherit it? It's, it's everything the opposite of calling him Adonai there uh, at the beginning. And all right, so, um, so let me read my notes, which are also sort of emphasizing that this part of the note. In verse 2 of chapter 15, God appears and gives and blesses Abram. At that point, Abram uses the name Adonai in its first use in the Bible. But instead of him giving back or serving the one who takes care of him, the God, uh, Elohim, uh, and honoring him as my Adonai, um, uh, who takes care of him, he has to have something given to him which is so a violation of the Godhead. Um, verse 2, And Abram said, Lord, Adonai, God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is Eliezer? So there it is, you know, Lord. Uh, this is the wrong use of the name and a violation of the relationship you must have unless you are asking God to save you as a member of the Trinity are one of that same spirit. In other words, you don't know anything about God, and you don't know anything about His Spirit and that nature. And you're and He's He's doing His part from up here, and you're down there, 
And you're supposed to be a servant. You're supposed to be, you know, give back and, you know, all of that. And, and just flash to, real quick, to Genesis 18, verse 1, when he runs up to, to God and calls him, or verse 1 or 2, and calls him Adonai. And watch what Abraham does from that point on. He doesn't do anything for himself. He doesn't ask for anything. He's caught on. Okay, and, and Genesis 18 is full of the use of the, the name Adonai. And guess who's using it all the time? And guess who's doing it in a humbler, more, much more humble spirit? All right, so... Um, Uh, verse 3, we get the same spirit. And Abraham said, Behold to me, thou hast given me, given me no seed. Lo, one born in my house is mine heir. In verse 7, God reiterates that he has already given. Verse 7, and he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of the Ur of Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. I'm already giving you. I'm doing my Elohim part, but you need to understand the name you're using when you're addressing me because there is not an ounce of giving or respect in it. It is only help you, bless you, lead you, teach you, you know, all of these things about your life on the earth instead of the life that I desired for you when I wanted to make you in my own image. I am Elohim. Nothing of that. Well, I'm more in the image of Christ. I don't smoke or I don't cuss or, you know, I, oh my God, my God. What if we're like this? What, what, if when, what if we stand before the Lord one day and He shows us all the time that we use the word Lord and used it to get Him to jump through hoops for our world, earthly life down here instead of His image? All right, so... Um, the, f the first two times uh, Abr Abram used the term Adonai, Genesis 15, was to get something for self. Let's summarize. In verse 1, God declares that he is something, uh, he is, he is something to the benefit of Abraham. But verse 2 starts with, what will you give me? Then he says, I go childless. Then he states what he will give, uh, that he will give God something. Abram states that he will give God something after that. I will give you Eliezer of the, Damascus because you didn't give me what I wanted. Then God rejects Abraham's giving. This shall not be the heir. Your giving is out of order. It is, no, it, is, it is a violation of this that we brought you into. This shall not be the heir. Now in verse 8, and he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit? He's always asking without giving. Okay, that's huge, okay? That, that is huge. All right. Now here's where I don't have those notes. So... Let's see, that was 15. Um, let's look at... Uh, let's go to Genesis 17. Oh. Okay, so um, Elohim is used, let's see, in Genesis 17, Elohim is used in chapter, in, in verse 3, verse 7 uh, through 9, verse 15, verse 18 and 19, verse 22 and 23. Elohim is used constantly, okay, and uh, is used by Abraham in verse, in chapter 17. And he is uh, addressing the Godhead, and he's addressing the Godhead as he's going through this chapter. All right, so 
Are you? Can you read yours? Maybe you can read yours out loud. Read Genesis uh, 17, uh, verse 3. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying. Okay. And the word God there, um, um, Scott or Mallory, somebody? It's Elohim. Oh, what a shock. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay, now Kelly, read verse uh, 7 through 9. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a, so a sojourner all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Okay, well, I forgot to mention that in verse 2, God says, I will make my covenant with you. So what you're hearing and what she just read in verse 7 through 9 <clears throat> is you are hearing um, God showing up and God showing up to Abraham and God telling him from the start, I will make my covenant to you. I will do this. I will do that. I will do this. I will do that. Okay. And so his response uh, back should be in a right spirit to the name Adonai, my protector, my keeper, my shepherd, my, you know, I'm with you and I'm doing all this for you and I serve you and I reverence you. Uh, but when I do that, that's what you are to me. There's covering. Okay, so that's what that's what's going on. That's what keeps going on here. Okay, read uh, verse uh, fifteen. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her. And that's just verse fifteen, right? Just verse fifteen. Okay. Well, I mean, the rest of it, I mean, if you read all of it around it, but these are the ones that it's using uh, the name Elohim, the name Elohim over and over. It's God Elohim saying, be with us in our spirit, be made after our image. We are giving, we are doing, we have promised. We have covenanted it. Now you, you respond in that same spirit. And that last, the, all of the verses we've read so far, the word God is Elohim, I think. And I'm sure we got our checkers here. Uh, all right, verse 18 and 19. And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael may live before thee. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son, indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. Okay, so what you've got is the first response of Abraham, which should be deep respect, deep respect uh, in addressing the Lord, in giving back to the Lord. But Abraham finally responds and he says, Oh, that Ishmael would live before you, would walk before you. Um, and see, we don't know how that would just shoot through the body of God, if you will. Just like, what a shock. You are so, so far from what we're trying to make in you. And every time we appear, and it's been 13 years since we appeared, and you're still doing what you were doing over in chapter 15. But in this time, in this chapter, chapter 17, God is calling himself throughout those scriptures Elohim. Therefore, you need to respond back if you're in that position of weakness and lowliness 
then you need to honor the, the rest of the Trinity, or in this case, all the Trinity, if you're going to be of that one spirit. You need to honor him as he is. In other words, we're using the name Adonai to, to represent that. But let's face it, we could, we could pray all day and whatever and call him Adonai, and it doesn't mean anything, if we don't understand that, there, that we are in the place of weakness and Elohim is there to cover us if we have, I mean, how many of you have prayed or thought, well, God didn't do this or that. I don't know. And God's supposed to be the, you know, the covering. God's supposed to take care of us. And God doesn't. And he didn't take care of us. In fact, it got worse and all this kind of stuff. How many of us have done, done that and, and questioned God and questioned his, his care as Elohim, questioned his nature as Elohim and, and, and talked down to him like this and, you know, and say, okay, well, here's what I want you to accept then, you know. Uh, good, thanks for the giving in, in uh, verse 1, and thanks for the giving in verse 2, thanks for this, and thanks for that, and thanks for that, and thanks for being Adonai all the way through, but since you're Adonai, you're the Lord, uh, you're the, the, you know, the, you're the champion, the protector, then where is, you know, where is these things that I expect and that you promised, okay? Totally out of the spirit. Okay, verse 22 and 23. And he ceased talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the very same day as God had said unto him. Okay, so... The first part of it is, and God went up, what's it say? And he ceased talking with him. Okay, God so went so God went up. It didn't just say God went up. You know, that could be, woo, that's the, you know, that's the disciples talking to Jesus after the resurrection, and then they went out in the wherever, and then they, you know, he went up. No, God ceased talking to him. After that, that stuff, that's it. I don't want to talk. <laughs> you ever been like that? It's like, I don't even want to talk anymore. Okay. You're so far from what we're trying to do here. Um, and, um, but all of that time, God was coming in the name of Adonai. And he was giving all the way through it. All the way through it. He gives and he gives and he gives and he gives. And it's not Elohim is not one-sided. It's not. If one is in weakness, then they're going to do their part. But you have to continue to have that spirit in the lowest place of giving back to him. And so I think part of what started happening here was he started realizing, you know, whoa, how many times did he use that name out of nine? I used it, you know. I was the first one to use it, but, you know. Um, but not only that, not only that, but he... Read the rest of that verse now. And he ceased talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. And the rest of it. 23. Yeah. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the very same day as God had said unto him. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, wow. But how does it end? Those are the verses just before chapter 18, verse 1. <coughs> Something happened. It wasn't, it wasn't just a teaching, if God gave a teaching all the way through to that point. <clears throat> it was, look, buddy, you know, it's Elohim talking. If anybody needs application of, of death and of the cross, you do. And of the removal of the flesh, you do. And your flesh is... Ishmael, <clears throat> and, but your heart needs to be circumcised. 
And so he's going through the process. I mean, I don't know how many people he had, but he, he had a fair amount of, remember in chapter 12, uh, and they're circumcising everybody, including Ishmael, including himself, all on that same day. And they're going through that. And they're going through, he's, he's literally going through the thing. And, and I believe that the Spirit of God is all of a sudden being able to talk to him, being able to say, you, this, you haven't heard from God in a real way, in a mountain moving way in 13 years. And he shows up. <clears throat> And he speaks as Adonai. And every time he speaks, you want to come back with something, like in chapter 15 you did. And in chapter 17, you waited until God gave and gave and gave and gave. And then you said, well, I don't, you know, thanks for the seed, but I don't want that seed. You know. And, um, and this... The explanation of circumcision is a death to you and your wants and to your, your askings, your prayers, and your idea of what's God and what's not God, and your idea of what life down here on this earth was meant to be. Not about you, not about your your work or your life or your family or your kids or your uh, all the things that, that consume us down here on this planet. But you're meant to be serving back in your weakness, us. And to be in a servant spirit, dead to your flesh, dead to the things. Cut it off. Cut that flesh off. Be circumcised. Don't, don't know all the scriptures on it and be able to teach about the cross on it. Be circumcised. He didn't tell him the he didn't just tell him the truth of circumcision. He said, go get you some knives. I mean, we have a very similar picture of that at Gilgal. When they came, they were coming back out of Egypt and they came all the way through the wilderness. And when they got to the Jordan River, part of the, uh, part of the application was to cross that river of death. But the other part was camp at Gilgal and all of y'all get circumcised because you're not going to get it. Even if you cross the Jordan and you understand what that means. You're not going to get it. And anyway, so that Gilgal teaching somewhere, and it's not a teaching. If we could grasp, we could grasp this thing that the Lord's trying to do. <clears throat> All right. So, um, okay, so we're, it's getting a little late here. So what I want to do is um, I want to I want to I want to come back and I want us to go through Genesis 18 and I, it was verse three actually not one or two but verse three where he calls me my Adonai and I want you to I want you to look up all the times that Adonai is used. <clears throat> and it probably wouldn't hurt you to look up through Genesis 17 all the times Elohim is used. Because he's, while getting circumcised, he's thinking, <clears throat> he has been Elohim in this chapter, if you will, you understand. In this chapter, he's been Elohim, major, and all he's done is give. <laughs> and to look at that and, and to grasp why it would use Elohim so much there and, and Abraham's clueless and whatever. But then he sees Elohim, in, not in name, but in three, 
and he understands I'm not one of them in that sense. I'm one of them in lowliness down here, if, if you will, in Christ and Christ in me by his nature. And I need to address him and talk to him and move towards him in a completely different way. So let's do that. Father, we thank you for this time and this, this search that you've got us on. Father, I know that <clears throat> I, I was swallowed up with a mammoth, mammoth ocean of the full meanings of all these different names that are yours, and I know that I don't grasp hardly any of it. But I know that you were the one that made everything, including us, and you made us the only things that you made you made us to be in your image. And you were, and at that time there was no other name for you but Elohim. You wanted us to flow in that spirit. And you knew that to truly be able to come into that wouldn't be to make us gods, it would be to make us lowly and put us in hard situations like Abraham was going through and slowly find out, oh my God, I, I have been a wretch to you in the way that I've treated you and talked to you and expect, expectations I've put on you. And I don't want to be that way anymore. I want to be Abraham 18. <laughs> Abraham chapter 18. Father, let your, let your Holy Spirit teach us the spirit of these things and not just the letter. We ask in your name. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for the help, by the way.